here we go. This is, uh, she was trapped yesterday at uh, around 10, 10, 10.30 a.m. And tonight it's about 8 o'clock, so, you know, about 18 hours or something off the trap. She, he is doing really good. I think it's a ham if you look at these meat hooks. Um, so he took forcep, uh, meat off the forceps for the first time uh, the session before this. This is our fourth session of the day, and we're giving him some wetted uh, chicken breast. Um, I'm not giving him casting material right now because I don't know if he can cast with this hood on. Uh, eventually, he won't have to be hooded as much. So here we go. There it is. Hi. Let's see how readily he takes food from the forceps. So I'm not looking him in the eyes. Just started taking food. It's only been the second session. He's really figuring it out. So I want him to stay hydrated so this is wetted. This is probably the fastest I've ever had a bird take food. Oops. He's really relaxing on the glove. It's quite amazing. He's super aggressive, which is a good thing. I think that he uh, is going to make a fantastic squirrel hawk. Super aggressive. Uh, he's certainly, you know, scared, but he's tried to foot me several times. Uh, uh, and and he's, uh, I think that's a good sign of aggression. Uh, he's calming me down and starting to trust me already a little bit. Yeah, this is way faster. Last year I trained Zuby and she was not eaten from the forceps within 24 hours. And with Zuby I had to kind of train her to look down at her feet for food before I fed her off, fed her, you know, some chunk of quail. See, you can just tell his behavior uh, uh, on how he's taking this food. And this is why, so if you look at how he's taking the food, this is why we don't feed him with our fingers. He's also getting a food association with these forceps, and if you feed him with your fingers, it can make him aggressive towards your hands. See how he's taking that from all the way down there? So this is good. The next step is I'll start with like a day-old chick down here at his feet. The old chick at his feet. Oh, he's honking a little bit. He's liking this. This is the quickest uh, I've ever had one uh, eaten from the forceps. Let's see if I'll take this other piece. There he goes. I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this is probably a couple of ounces of chicken. It's not, uh, in falconry we used a term of soaked, where you let it sit for like 24 hours in water and it leaches out some of the nutrients and it helps their weight go down quicker. This is not soaked, this is just wetted. This is chicken that's been wetted with warm water to keep his hydration up. So it still has some nutrients in him. Um, my goal is to lose 1% of his body weight a day. So as I'm bringing his weight down for falconry, I'm going to try and lower it about one, uh, sorry, 10 grams a day, 10 grams a day. So I weigh him each morning uh, before I feed him the first time, and my goal is that he will, uh, he will lose about 10 grams. The first couple of days, I don't really focus on that because I want him uh, to, to not, uh, you know, right off the trap, the other thing, uh, I don't want him to lose too much weight right away. The other thing I'm going to do is 
I'm going to treat him for worms. I haven't seen any worms in his mutes, but I'll treat him for parasites and worms anyway, um, kind of prophylactically. Make sure that, so he's, he's eating really good. There you go. He, was, he had an empty crop when I trapped him, so he hadn't eaten yet that day. So that's probably why he's so hungry here. There you go. That was a couple of ounces of chicken right there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna spend some time with them. Um, at this point, I don't push the manning. I know a lot of falconers do. Uh, they man really heavy from the beginning. I like to earn their trust and then start manning. So I just do a little light touch like that. See, he was starting to bristle up a little bit. <clears throat> Come over here, touch that toe like that. Let him settle down a little bit. And after I get him eating off the glove, like the food, I'll have like a little bit of bloody quail or something on the glove and let him go at it. And when he's feeding off the glove like that, I start increasing the amount of time that I spend manning him and not feeding him and uh, touching him and get him used to all of that. So here we go, we're gonna touch his wing. He jumped a little bit, he's looking at me. So far he hasn't tried to bite me yet, but I think he will be a little more of a nippy bird um, the other thing is he does not like the hood at all. Um, he's one of the hardest birds uh, that I've uh, tried to, hardest hawks that I've tried to hood. He just bites the crap out of the hood. He doesn't like it. Um, I might try some uh, high level tidbitting. You can Google that if you're curious about what that means to see if I can get him a little more used to it. Um, but uh, yeah, he's doing good. He uh, ate that whole meal from the forceps. That's really good. Watching these toes, if he shifts his weight to like the other leg, that means he's getting ready to pick that foot up and shoot it out, and they're really fast. So now this one is the one I'm looking out for, just touching these toes. They come up and touch him there. See that look, he, he thought about it. He was thinking, you know, maybe I could bite him. And the key is don't make them do the behavior that you don't want them to do. So you. You put pressure on them to do what you want them to do, but you don't push so hard that you make them react in a bad way because that's the start of a, of a bad conditioning. So uh, uh, you don't want them to do the behavior, and so you got to kind of read your bird and stop before it happens. So I'm just stroking his wing, getting, he's thinking about that. See, so he kind of puffed up a little bit there. And so we'll just keep having sessions. So. Um, now that he's already eaten from the forceps, I bet you tomorrow he, he'll eat from food on the glove. Um, and I'll start doing more manning. And I'll increase the frequency and the length of time that I have him unhooded. When I'm not working with him, he goes in the giant hood, which is a box uh, with a door on it. And he sits in there and the dark keeps him quiet and keeps him from baiting and crashing around. Um, right now I put his hood over his head first and then put him in there and eventually I'll just start putting them in there without the hood. What I don't want to do is start to make the hood a negative association. Um, he's going to mute. Hey, I got that one right on the pad. There's a puppy pad down here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yep, nice looking mute. Don't see any worms or anything in it. That's pretty good. He's kind of checking me out. He's looking at me. Um, he's also looking around the room. He's looking at the light fixtures. They're very cautious of anything above them. Right now I don't have the fan in my office spinning. Um, I'll probably introduce that at a later time so it doesn't freak them out. But um, anything movement above them in the wild could be something attacking them and so it makes them nervous. But yeah, he's starting to look around. He's calmed down. His wings aren't all outstretched. His hackles aren't up on the back of his head. Touch him there, and I touch him here, and I touch his wing, watching his beak. Let him relax a second, touch this one. Yeah, see the mouth? See the eyes? That that was a bad thought. So um, I probably pushed that one a little too long. So I should have gone up, touch, stop. Don't do it so long that you make them maybe react. There's there's some other schools of thought on this. This is just how I do it. Um, uh, and it's worked well for me. So touch, stop. That time he didn't make the reaction. He's looking at me. He's like, are you going to try to kill me? 
touching his toes. He's doing really good with that. He's doing really good with that. I'll gradually start touching all over his feet. I'll start touching up his legs. I'll start touching all the way up. Um, I even sleep in a touch there to his keel. He wasn't sure about that, so I'll keep working on that. Touch his keel like that, because that's how we check their condition. We feel that keel bone, and then we feel the meat on both sides of the keel bone to uh, see what it feels like. So anyway, yeah, this is Finn, juvenile red-tailed hawk trapped in Oklahoma. Uh, over, I trapped them uh, up, bait, there's a bait. All right, it's okay, bud. Let's see if I can get his, put his feet back normal, relaxed. Okay, let him settle down. There we go. And just put those back. So I'm gonna rock my hand a little bit so he like adjusts his feet. Um, but he does need to face me and not, so I'm gonna push him around. There we go. Just got him to turn. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll my hand a little bit and just get him to adjust that foot up. Just think about baiting again. That was a little bit of a footing. Just keep these jesses tight. Those feet are business, man. They're like, I don't know. I've heard like 6,800 pounds per square inch ending in a razor in a needle sharp talon. So, so I'm just gonna rock my hand, give him to adjust. There. His feet are nice and relaxed sitting there. That's good. Tighten these jesses up a little bit because they pick their foot up and then they shoot it out. So if you, you're tight, they're less likely to do it. Um, earlier, something startled him and he baited off the glove and then he shot a foot up from a hanging position and grabbed this pinky. And the pinky of a falconry glove is usually a little thinner material and it went through. And, and it wasn't super bad, but it, it, it made me bleed a little bit. Um, so he's definitely an aggressive little dude. I really like him. Yeah, he was watching that hand. So that let him relax a little bit. He's watching the hand. Want him to make sure that the hand's not going to hurt him, that he doesn't get a negative association with my hand and like start trying to foot it and things like that. So just settle down. He's actually doing really good. He's really calm. Touch him right there puffed up a little bit. So I'm not going to push the training too much further. Um, my school of thought is if you push it too hard too fast, you can create negative connotations with your bird. So I like to gradually work my way up uh, in length and periods, um, and it's worked pretty good for me in the past. So anyway, uh, just figured I'd show you a little bit about my manning process, and uh, you can kind of see how I do it as I go. Thanks. All right, we're going to try and get the hood on you here, dude. You hate the hood, I know. You don't like this hood. No, it's okay. There we go. That actually went pretty well. And I've done this before, and I've made it come off. So he fights more than any other bird I've ever had, that hood. Okay, so now we'll put this on. That was good. Except for now he's being a little, he's like, ah, oh, I got a hood on. Now he's putting the glove a little bit. Okay, we'll let him settle down just a little bit. I'll rock my hand, get him to stand, and calm down. There. And then I'll go put him back in the soft box.